Welcome back, everybody, to episode 79 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I'm your host, Paul Marquis. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Dupuytren's contractures of the hand. Um, this is something that is very, very common in uh, certain parts of the world, more common than others, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, these can be a very debilitating issue, but I think if caught early, can certainly be um, very helpful to patients, and uh, the direction is certainly different than treating this when it's too late. Um, so, in just a few, we're going to talk about, you know, what it is, uh, why some people get it more than other people, and uh, how we treat it. So if you just hold for a second, we're going to hear a word from our sponsor. Hello and welcome back, everyone. So, do Poitrin's contractures of the hand? We've we've heard of it, um, we've seen it. Uh, a, a lot of us have, and um, you know, as you know, these are very very difficult to treat, especially if it's gone on too long. Okay, so what is a do Poitrin's contracture? Well, it's usually an excess collagen deposition okay so we're, we're depositing a lot of collagen along the flexor tendons of the hand usually in the palm um, and it's usually the fourth and fifth fingers that get affected the most so they can curl right up to a point where they can't even straighten them out but it can affect all the other fingers also and it's usually in the palm of the hand now what are some of the early signs of Dupuytren's contracture well the first thing you want to look at, and I look at the palm of the hand a lot, okay, with patients, especially people who are going to be having shoulder surgery or who have just had shoulder surgery. Talk about that in a little bit. So when you take a look at the, the palm of the hand, what I do is I have them try to extend the fingers so they're at least neutral. They don't have to go into hyperextension, but as long as they're into neutral, look at the palm and you may see some dimpling right next to where the flexor tendons are and it's just basically like a little dimple there a little um, a little hole sometimes um, and you can see that when they straighten out the fingers and bend the fingers that whole position may change because of the scarring of the underlying tissue all right when people are at this stage where it's kind of like questionable um, you want to go ahead and then palpate that area and sometimes can be very painful these people are, are going to be the folks that do a lot of gripping and grasping of really hard objects like a, an axe handle or maybe they're, they're doing bicep curls with a, a dumbbell or using a barbell and they're squeezing that and it's pushing on that tendon on that dimpled area and that can be quite painful sometimes they'll get a little bit of triggering with this and that will triggering will be in another episode but sometimes the finger will kind of get stuck a little bit you could get some triggering associated with the dupuytren's contracture just because of that scar tissue buildup in that area so if you're catching it early and you see the dimpling and you know they're developing a dupuytren's contracture um, it's important that you start them on a stretching program flexibility you can ultrasound that while doing stretching you can place them into a static splint to keep the fingers in a more extended position so they don't rest, especially at night when they're sleeping in that flex position. The other thing you should recognize and know is that this is very common in males of Northern European descent. So if I see a male of Northern European descent who comes in and they have a rotator cuff tear and I know they're going to be having surgery in a couple of weeks, I always take a look at the palm of their hand to see if they have any signs of Dupuytren contractures. Those people, I want to get into therapy soon after surgery. Now, I know that there are some docs out there that like to hold back on having patients seen in therapy with rotator cuff repairs. You know, if, if we know as therapists which tissues were repaired, we know what activities to avoid, what not to overstretch and not what to and what not to overcontract. But those people will typically be stiffer and tighter. And I've seen this with experience. I had several patients at one time who had rotator cuff repairs who developed very, very stiff shoulders afterwards, only came to see me at four weeks after. And uh, come to find out all of these males of Northern European descent um, all had Dupuytren's contractors. And so as we started looking into this a little bit more, we saw this very close association. So keep that in mind before these patients have surgery or if they've just had uh, shoulder surgery, they may stiff up faster than others okay and it doesn't mean that it's just the shoulder that'll get stiff they could have spinal stiffness they could have hip joint stiffness um so something just to take into consideration now oftentimes you'll see these people who have just started to develop this and they don't have a lot of pain associated with it but they start to lose function they can't extend the fingers very well they get locked in this flex position they can't put a glove on anymore they have a hard time putting their hand in their pocket because it's in the way um you know 
some of these folks just cannot be taken care of conservatively. They're, they're, the, the scar tissue is just adhered, is completely matured, and, and it has to either be um, surgically removed uh, and lysed, uh, you know, with a with a procedure, an open procedure. Um, and then there are others out there who may do like a Zyflex injections and manipulate the, um, the tendon uh, the next day and then keep them in a splint after that. And, and those who do have open surgery for this and have that debrided and straightened out, it's very important that these folks get into therapy, occupational or physical therapy, or see a hand therapist soon after surgery. I mean, we've seen them the next day, sometimes the same day, to try to maintain that mobility so that it doesn't have a chance to scar back down again. Um, and, and and these people do fairly well. You know, when once they have that cleared up, they, they increase their range of motion, they don't necessarily had a lot of pain in, in the first place, but their function seems to improve significantly. So their quality of life gets better. Um, so that's my tidbit today on D, on uh, Dupuytren's contractures. And um, if you have any questions or comments or treatment techniques that you really like to use or little tidbits of information that help you recognize Dupuytren's um, quickly, please feel free to um, you know get to me on my get in touch page at orthoevalpal.com. Make sure you follow us on um, iTunes. Give us a rating and review that really helps with our, our numbers there. And um, that would be greatly appreciated. Again, all of the comments and, and questions that have been awesome lately. We've had a lot of folks checking out our YouTube channel with all of our patients with real diagnoses. And we talk about treatment plans. We talk about how to diagnose them better and more efficiently. Uh, and um, that is our goal. Our goal is to make you more comfortable comfortable with your orthopedic evaluation skills. I hope it's working. Um, I actually hear a lot of comments from a lot of people. We just uh, got a great comment from somebody who came to one of my courses who was able to identify uh, and diagnose a patient within seconds uh, after uh, learning some of the new tests that we have uh, educated them on. And uh, so that's, uh, that's what makes me happy. Um, you know, getting a better diagnosis quicker and more confidently. So folks, Thank you again so much for listening. My name is Paul Marquis, the host of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast show. Um, hope you continue listening. Have a lot of great content to, uh, to come. So um, I hope you have a great day and take care.